This is episode 9 of the Edexcel P3 revision tutorials. Today we will be looking at stability graphs and we will also look at quarks. So we will be looking at the features of the NZ curve for stable isotopes. We will identify the type of decay for radioactive isotope based on this NZ curve and we will look at both beta plus and beta minus decay in terms of quarks. Last lesson we looked at this structure of the atom. This should be the structure of the atom that you're very familiar with. In the nucleus we have the protons and neutrons and around the outside we have electrons. However, there is an issue with this view of the atom because inside both our protons and neutrons we have subatomic particles, known as the fundamental particles. Overall, there are 12 fundamental particles. We have our six quarks, up, down, charm, strange, top and bottom. We have our six leptons. We have our electron neutrino, our muon neutrino and our tau neutrino. And we have our electron muon and tau, muon and tau being heavier versions of the electron. And finally, we have our bosons, or our force carriers. Our photon, which is our light, our gluon, our weak force, and our secondary weak force. We also have another fundamental particle known as the Higgs boson, which we will look at briefly. For P3, you only need to know about the up quark and the down quark as these are the quarks that make up both the proton and the neutron. Here we have another diagram of the particles of the standard model, once again showing our up quark and our down quark, as well as our neutrinos and our electron. We can see here we also have the Higgs boson, which was discovered in CERN in 2013. So the quarks we need to know about are the up quark and the down quark. Protons and neutrons are made of different combinations of three up and down quarks. A proton being made of two up and one down, and a neutron being made of one up and two down. Two sample questions. So quarks have charges that are multiples of one over three. Given the composition and charge of the proton and the neutron, what are the charges on the up and down quark? And what happens in terms of quarks during beta plus and beta minus decay? Well, our up quark has a charge of plus 2 over 3, and our down quark has a charge of minus 1 over 3. And during beta plus and beta minus, it's the up quark turning into a down quark or vice versa. We will look at this in more detail. Here we have our beta plus and our beta minus decay in more detail. In the last tutorial, we looked at beta plus decay being a proton turning into a neutron, releasing this neutrino and our positron. And in beta minus, we had our neutron turning into a proton, releasing our antineutrino and our beta minus particle, our electron. In quarks, in order to do this, in beta plus, an up quark turns into a down quark. And in beta minus decay, it's a down quark that becomes an up quark. We will now look at the charges of the quarks in a little bit more detail. So, as we said on the last slide, an up quark has a charge of plus two thirds and a down quark has a charge of minus one third. We will look at this in terms of our proton and then in our neutron. In our proton, we have two up quarks. This means we have two plus two over three charges. And we also have 1 minus 1 over 3 charge from our down quark. This gives us an overall charge of plus 1, the charge of a proton. When one of these up quarks turns into a down quark, 
we now have 1 plus 2 over 3 charge and 2 minus 1 over 3 charges giving us an overall charge of 0, the charge of the neutron. As the charge after the decay is now less than the charge before the decay, a positive charge must have been given off. This is our positive charged electron, the positron here. In our beta minus decay, we start with a neutron which has a charge overall of 0, as we showed earlier and turns into a proton, again with a charge of plus 1, as shown earlier. As the charge after the decay is now more than the charge before the decay, we must have given off a negative charge. This is our negatively charged electron here, our high energy beta minus particle. We will now use this information along with our knowledge of alpha radiation to look at decay in more detail. Here are three example questions, one for alpha decay, one for beta minus decay and one for beta plus decay. I want you to pause the video and work out the mass and atomic numbers for these three questions. For question 1, you should have had radium 228 becoming radon 224, giving off the alpha particle mass for atomic number 2. Beta minus decay, we have strontium 90 turning into yttrium 90, giving off our high energy electron, the proton number increasing by 1 as a neutron has turned into a proton. And then finally, for our beta plus decay, we have boron-12 turning into beryllium-12 and giving off this positron. Our anti-electron with its positive charge, a proton, has become a neutron and we have given off this positron. We can use this information to look at the probability of an isotope going through radioactive decay. So what is an isotope? You should remember from both C2 and P2 that an isotope is an atom with a different number of neutrons. So we've got oxygen 16, oxygen 17 and oxygen 18. Each isotope has 8 protons. If they didn't, it wouldn't be oxygen anymore. However, each of our isotopes are different in mass number and so from left to right, oxygen 16 has 8 neutrons, oxygen 17 has 9 neutrons, and oxygen 18 has 10 neutrons. To work out neutrons, we take the mass number and then take away the proton number. The number left over is our number of neutrons. If we plot the number of neutrons against the number of protons, we can form an NZ curve. So this is our stability graph, and it is known as an NZ curve, plotting the number of neutrons on the y-axis, which is N, against the proton number, Z, which is on the bottom. The Z comes from the German for proton, and the graph will look like this. We can see that we end up with a curve in the middle. This is where all of our stable isotopes are found. The closer to the line you are, the more stable an isotope you are. By examining the graph, we can find out the likelihood of an isotope being a radioisotope. If the isotope is found on the left-hand side of the line here, then it will be a beta minus emitter. It will have too many neutrons and therefore will look at converting a neutron to a proton to be closer to the line. If our isotope is found on the right hand side of the curve, then it will be a beta plus emitter. It will have too many protons and therefore will go through beta plus decay to turn a proton into a neutron to go left in order to be closer to the NZ curve and therefore be more stable. It's important to note that NZ curves do not go above 82 protons. Any isotope of an element with more than 82 protons 
will be unstable and will go through alpha decay. We will now look at the NZ curve showing the decay of uranium. Here is the NZ curve for the decay of uranium. We can see we start with uranium here. So we have uranium, which has an atomic number higher than 82, going through alpha decay to become thorium. Thorium then goes through beta minus decay to become palladium, and then back to uranium. Uranium, once again, will go through alpha decay to form thorium, before thorium goes through alpha decay to become radium, then radon, then polonium, and then finally down to lead. If radium here were to go through beta plus decay, it would turn into francium and move towards the left. In the next tutorial video, tutorial video 10, we will be looking at the dangers of radiation as well as its uses in healthcare.